Hi, and welcome to this lecture on the general capabilities. So by the end of this lecture, you should be able to recall the elements of each of the seven capabilities. But more specifically, because this is a science uh, teaching course, you should be able to give examples of how we develop each of these capabilities within science. So just to give you the big picture of where the seven uh, capabilities fits into the Australian curriculum, the Australian curriculum is three-dimensional in nature. So there are the learning, the eight learning areas. So that's science, and mathematics, and history, and geography. Then there are these two other elements, and that's what makes it three-dimensional. So the first one that we'll talk about is the cross-curriculum priorities. So these are contexts with that the Australian government have deemed to be super, super important, and that we should be using these three contexts somewhere when we are teaching each, each of our learning areas from K through to year 10. So we should be teaching about sustainability, using that as a particular context, talking about uh, Asia and Australia's engagement within Asia, within those contexts, and also Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories and cultures. So they are the contexts that, that have been deemed to be the most important, that we should be at some stage be basing our, our units of work on, on those three contexts. The other element which is also runs across the eight learning areas are the seven general capabilities. Now these essentially are the skills that the curriculum writers have deemed to be necessary for learners to be confident, creative individuals and active and informed citizens. So essentially what it boils down to is that an Australian citizen who is participating within the democratic processes of this country should be able to read, should be able to do maths, should be able to use modern technology for a variety of things. They should be able to do higher order thinking skills in terms of being critical and creative. They should know themselves and know other people and, and how to interact with other people. We should be ethical in our behaviour and we should be also be working towards understanding other cultures. So these are the seven elements that we should be uh, developing. Now, some of these are easier than others. So for example, we will be developing literacy and numeracy pretty much in every lesson that we actually do. But some of the others, particularly within science, are a little bit harder to get, um, to make sure that we are addressing those and helping to develop those areas in our students. But at various points in the curriculum, we do actually do those kinds of things. So we'll be going through this, and I'll, and I'll be talking really about the elements of each of the, uh, the general capabilities, and then as an exercise for you, is to think about how do we develop literacy in science? How do we develop personal and social capability? Um, and so forth, okay? So let's jump into them straight away. So obviously the first thing that a citizen needs to be able to do is to be able to read and write. So there are two key elements to this. Not only understanding text, which is the comprehension, uh, comprehending text through listening, reading and viewing, but also then producing those texts. So it's a double-sided coin here. We need to be able to read and interpret text, but also produce text ourselves. So, and then within those two areas, comprehension and production, there are two sub-areas as you can see there. Okay? So numeracy, is, there's quite clear links of numeracy within the sciences because we're always measuring, we're always estimating and using whole numbers, a whole range of our things uh, actually look at fractions and use fractions, decimals and percentages and also the use of spatial reasoning. So for example, in technology and engineering, there's a lot of spatial awareness which actually comes into play there, um, but also map reading and interpreting visual diagrams and things like that. So, so there's quite clear links of how we develop numeracy within the sciences. The next one is obviously using the computers, the modern technology, not only for communicating, but also for creating. So we want students to be able to create PowerPoints, to be able to create websites, to be able to create uh, interactive animations and things like that. So there's the communicating with ICT, uh, email, uh, synchronous collaboration, asynchronous collaboration, but also there is the research, the using the ICT as a research skill. So this one has three elements to it, um, all of which I'm pretty sure you can think of ways that we develop those. 
in science. The next one we have a look at is critical and creative thinking. Now, cast your mind back to the lecture on cognitive verbs where we looked at Bloom's taxonomy. Critical and creative thinking are really shorthand code for higher order thinking. So analyzing, evaluating, and creating is what we're talking about here. Okay? So the critical, that's the analysis and evaluation level, and the creative is obviously the creating level. So we want to be able to generate and create new solutions. Not only do we want students to be able to create and generate new solutions, but also be able to evaluate, to be able to analyze different elements and different solutions, um, and, and do, do the same for uh, evaluation of those same ideas. So that's critical and creative thinking. We do that a whole lot. So we have students uh, creating hypotheses, coming up with their own methods. So there's a whole range of ways that we are quite critical and creative within the sciences. Personal social capability, that's where, uh, th that essentially boils down to knowing oneself and knowing other people and knowing how to relate with other people. So there's that whole introspection stuff, knowing, know thyself. So that's that self-management and self-awareness. So there's a lot of self-management skills which uh, surround academia. So for example, um, having resilience is, is a key skill there. Uh, being able to um, be self-directed being able to delay gratification. So they're all self-management uh, skills that we are developing in sciences. But also, not only is there the self that you need to worry about, but there's also being able to interact appropriately with other people. So there's the social awareness, knowing you and your place within social hierarchies, within family, community, on the national scene, international scene even, but also knowing how to behave within a variety of social settings. Um, so knowing how to behave in a classroom versus um, uh, playing cricket with a bunch of mates on the weekend versus talking to our grandma in the nursing home, for example. All of those are different social contexts. We need to be aware that we act differently in each of those contexts. The next one that uh, we're going to have a look at is ethical understanding. So being ethical, doing, doing the right thing. Okay? So not only are there the reasoning in terms of decision making and actions, thinking about a situation, thinking through the possibilities in terms of how we can react to the situation and then choosing an appropriate course of action based upon that analysis and evaluation. There's also the exploring of values, rights and responsibilities. So that's a key element within citizenship education, knowing our rights and values, not only within classroom setting, but in society as a whole, within Australia as a whole. Then there's the, the third element there, which is the understanding ethical concepts and issues, knowing different ethical frameworks and being, to, being able to apply those eth ethical frameworks within a given situation. Okay? So there's a whole range of things there. Um, the, the mo the, uh, an example which springs to mind in terms of helping our students in science develop ethical understanding is where you may do animal dissections as part of the unit looking at human body systems, but then having a compulsory activity within that suite of lessons where we ask students to puzzle through um, the ethical treatment of not only for animals for food production, but animals in terms of science research. Um, the, the, the ethical the, or the ethics of bringing in a rat into our classroom to dissect it for our learning, um, thinking about things like that. Okay? And the last one is intercultural understanding, not only understanding what Australian culture is and, 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 and um, the, the complexity of Australian culture, but also understanding other people's culture. So this qu ties quite nicely into the cross curriculum uh, uh, priority of Australia and Australia's engagement with uh, Asia. Um, but more broadly, it relates to relationships and cultural relationships within the school and within the community. We deal with this in science by looking at the different contributions of different cultures from around the world. So, for example, there was huge influence of India and the Middle East um, in terms of the development of the scientific method. That was picked up um, by later scientists over in the UK who developed the modern scientific method based upon those older ideas. And we've also looked at indigenous science 
So understanding how different cultures gather and verify information, useful information that uh, helps them to survive. So we may not be doing some of these, um, some of these general capabilities every single lesson, but when we do do them, there are some really, really rich discussions that we're able to have because of those. So that's the end of the lecture. So what you should be able to do is to be able to recall the elements of each capability. Now, if, you, uh, if you're having troubles with that, you can either go back and re-watch this video, which very much just provides you with a quick summary of this particular area, but I definitely recommend that you Google general, general capabilities and Australian curriculum so you can actually go and read the source material for yourselves and actually flesh out your notes. And you should be able to also provide examples of how each of the general capabilities are dealt with in the sciences. Thank you.